What's it like to be natural? To many, it's life marked by endless workouts, the pursuit of perfect lighting, and the ability to manage glycogen better than a diabetic. It's a commitment to oneself to avoiding shortcuts. It's not an easy road to take. Today I'm gonna to show you what it's like to be a natural. And Natty's daily struggle starts without delay, waking up still sore from your past three workouts, noodle-like arms wrapped around your significant other who somehow doesn't mind you having a smaller chest. You finally see yourself in the mirror. Yesterday was a low carb day and you managed to look like you traveled back in time to the first day of puberty. It's like anabolic groundhog day, waking up to the same results in the mirror, no matter how many days go by. For breakfast today, we are making the spirit animal breakfast food of a natural athlete, which is some protein pancakes, because quite often a natty is going to be flat, lacking definition, and stuffed with protein. And in general, protein pancakes lack a lot of flavor, and they are somehow as dry as a towel, but we are going to change that today with my strawberry cheesecake protein pancake recipe. As always, we're going to start dry, and then things are going to get wet. So we have one third of a cup of some oatmeal, one tablespoon of some coconut flour into our high-performance blender. Next, you're gonna go in one scoop of vanilla protein. You can use code 10 to save you 10% off all BPM products. Link is in the description. So one scoop, which is 36 grams. And then what is gonna add that cheesecake-like flavor is this sugar-free, fat-free, pudding mix cheesecake flavor. We are going in with the entire container, which is only 100 calories and adds a lot of flavor. Last but not least, we're gonna add a teaspoon of some baking powder for fluffiness and then some stevia to taste. I generally do around a tablespoon. And now moving on to the wet ingredients. So I've already pre-portioned my wet stuff here. So we have a quarter of a cup of cashew milk, quarter of a cup of non-fat Greek yogurt and two egg whites. We're just gonna drop that in. And then last, but certainly not least, we are gonna add around quarter of a cup of some fresh strawberries. And now we are gonna blend it up until it's nice and smooth, preheat our pan, and we are good to go. A little burnt, a little burnt, but it's okay, the flavor is gonna be there. Not my day. Gonna top these bad boys off with some Walden Farms. Just because I don't invite a syringe into my life does not mean I don't wanna take some serious risks. I love this delicious poison. Calories and macros will be on the screen, and let's dive on in. It smells like the Cheesecake Factory. Oh baby. It tastes like IHOP with morals. You have the fun, you have the flavor of IHOP, but then it's doing something good for you at the same time with the protein. That is delicious. Now obviously, if you don't like strawberries, you don't have to use strawberries. The cheesecake thing is the base. You can put whatever fruit you want in it. I do mango quite often, blueberries very often. I just like strawberries because they are pretty much the lowest calorie fruit that you can find. Breakfast done. Now I got a little lesson for you guys. I'm gonna show you all a quick little lesson using this diagram right here, which looks to be an anti-vax Ponzi scheme. Like the pages of Playboy, not all naturals are created equal. Some will appreciate the sizes in which you're capable of naturally, while others will pursue augmentation for a more cover-worthy presence. So using this pyramid right here, I'm gonna outline for you the three tiers of a natural bodybuilder. Starting with tier number one. Now this is the host to the genetic elites. What they do in the gym is actually a reflection of what you see on their body. Much like a virgin strawberry daiquiri, they are pretty much identical to their chemically enhanced counterparts, often requiring me to have a taste to really tell the difference. Up next, we have tier two. Whether it is societal pressures or your personal ego, the tier two natties are most likely to dabble with anabolics or what some like to call the saucy train. And when they do, they actually take it pretty far starting with an excuse like, I am just gonna go on until I hit my natural limit and then come off, no strings attached, only a couple years later to see their autopsy and it turns out they doubled down on HGH and artificial bear semen. There are hunters, there are gatherers, and then there are the incels of the natty world. No matter how hard they train or how long they train, just like an incel in love, it's the gains that they're struggling to pick up. Instead of hating on Stacy's and Chad's, they actually curse their parents for bestowing them with inferior genetics. After listening to this segment and you feel like none of these apply to you, I hate to say it, but... 
Just like a preacher's rebellious daughter, a natty will be open to trying anything that doesn't take away their cherished card. A gear user will go to a supplement store to find supplements to supplement their diet and subpar training, where a natty will go to find something that makes them feel superhuman, even just for a moment. They're trying to find that anabolic pot of gold. To a natty, creatine is the reliable girl next door, while Turk is the foreign exchange student. Mysterious and alluring. We may not know the consequences just yet, but the pursuit of an edge is a natty desperate enough to suck a plant or insect dry of its anabolic compounds. Compared to juice heads, natties are the generic brand version of lab rats, looking for every way that they can to imitate their original product without resorting to the actual anabolic formula. O-N-E spells one to majority of the population, but to us natties that spells own. Anything that ends with own is of immediate interest and appeals to the risk takers among us, as now there's plausible deniability if there's an anabolic obtained. And last but not least, always be sure to ask, is there anything in the back? Follow me. Here's where you find things that are suspiciously effective and not on WADA's hit list yet. Just be sure to have a good cover story. Tainted Brazilian beef is always mine. Look, at the end of the day, a natty could have a key to the entire pharmacy, but he's just as well off with sugar pills and a placebo effect. If you want it. For today's workout, we're gonna be doing something from my new size and strength program that I just created last night. Natties are notorious program hoppers showing the loyalty of a feral cat. Because what happens is, we get impatient. We are just as impatient as gear users. The only thing is, we actually have to wait. After the noob gains, Things are very, very slow. The only time you're gonna see progress in 30 seconds is in the gym parking lot. So the first thing we're gonna start with, three sets of 10, bench press. While your arms are quaking after the 10th failed attempt to add a rep to your 3x10 bench, an enhanced lifter is just patiently waiting at the side. There's no rush on a PR is practically guaranteed. As a natural lifter, you can foster a love-hate relationship with the gym and your body. 30% of the time, you can look at yourself in the mirror and actually like what you see and enjoy the view. The other 70% of the time, you are left wondering if we live in a simulation where your actions have no real effect. At least if you get stranded in the open ocean, you'll be pretty good at treading water. As a natural lifter, you have to take pride in the small victories in the gym, like adding 0.1 of an inch to your biceps within a year. It doesn't seem like a lot, but at least you don't have to worry about your enhanced counterparts outgrowing you in one specific area. Time to grow that shelf-like upper chest that we all desire that naturally just grows more when you're unnatural. The last exercise we are going to do is a chest supported machine row. So the entire workout, we only have six working sets per muscle group because as a natural, you have to prioritize your volume and recovery because that is the make or break difference from you looking like Christian Bale in Batman versus Christian Bale in The Machinist. A big workout for an Addy is like going 12 rounds with Mike Tyson and not the fun kind. Obviously, the most popular forms of progressive overload are adding reps or adding weight, but those are not the only ways to progressively overload on a lift, because over time, that gets pretty close to impossible, especially if you've been doing it for a very long time. So some things that you can do are, you know, work on cleaning up the form, faster rep speed, pausing on the reps, and just cleaning things up. So one thing I've been doing and prioritizing lately in my training is just kind of not focusing on the weight and how many reps I'm doing, but making sure the form is spot on, crispy clean, no jerking motions, and then I add weight and I go from there. Might not be as much weight, but you'll probably see more results. Training when you're enhanced versus training when you're natural are completely different beasts. If you're natural, you don't want to train like Mr. Olympia because if you do, you're going to get injured, you're going to overtrain, and you're going to bury yourself into the ground. And the only reps you're going to be counting is the amount of turns you have left in your senior shuffleboard match. 
It's boys night out, you're getting ready while simultaneously contemplating how your parents would act if you decided to hop on gear. Hey mom, there's something I need to tell you. It might change the way that you see me. It's gonna be a big lifestyle change, but overall it's gonna make me happier. No, it's not that. It's more of like a business thing. Drugs? Well, sort of, it's a bit more natural, though. I don't know if you could be calling me that. Just tell me that you love me, because if it works, there's gonna be a lot more of me to love. After three plays, the ball rests on the one foot line. Then Fred Cohn dives over for the score. The game is on, all the boys have wings and beer, and you are here sitting with a salad and grilled chicken because you are bulking 150 calories over maintenance because you're convincing yourself that you are main gaming. The joke's on you. You're still gonna lose your abs. Salad on game night is a big red flag. What's next? Your favorite player is the punter? I'm gonna go with my dressing here, dressing on the side. I kinda wanna add it all. The temptation to get on the sauce is literally everywhere today. So what is my opinion on steroids? I'm not saying that you should do it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying that if you're gonna do it, make sure you know why you're doing it. And I'm gonna be speaking for a lot of people, not everybody, but what's important to you right now is not gonna be important to you in like five years. That is why there's so many people getting tattoo removal because they think it's cool when they're younger and then they get older, they're like, why the hell did I do this? And this is something that you could potentially live with consequences for the rest of your life. So just be sure that it's gonna enhance your quality of life, you're gonna be happy, and it's just gonna improve your life. And if you want to do it, by all means, go for it. You do you, as for me, I am just happy living this natty life. The struggle, the daily grind, I love it. I love the fitness, I love grinding every day. The ups and downs, that's what it's all about. So I'm gonna wrap it up here. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to drop a like. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.